Hey guys, my name is Anderson Dick. I'm the CEO and founder for FuelTech. And uh, I'm here today to tell you and explain one very specific and very interesting project is a, a compound turbo on a jet ski. This is a something a little different. Uh, we've seen a few jet skis in the world doing a compound turbo over the stock supercharger. We never found something really deep into that. So since we have a lot of experience with compounding turbos over turbos actually on, on drag racing cars, you guys seen probably a video on a rotary and we had other uh, uh, air-cooled Volkswagen four-cylinder engine also making over uh, 2,000 horsepower here on our hub dyno. But today we're going to talk about the jet skis specifically, which is a little different compound and I will explain how it works, what's the difference between the traditional other ways of actually boosting these engines. So this is a four-cylinder engine, doesn't matter if it's a jet ski, it, it has pretty much the same design as any, any engine. The difference is like this is the Yamaha SVHO engine, they come on the GP 1800s, the FX and the older FCR and FCS uh, jet skis. So this platform is very well designed and a very reliable platform for, for modifications. Uh, it comes with a HKS supercharger here, driven by a shaft, and this is connected directly through gears to the crankshaft. Torque form, it makes about 250 horsepower and revs about 8,000 RPM. So this engine makes about 12 pounds of boost to make this 250 horsepower. The difference is uh, when you actually want to increase the, the boost on these engines, the most common way is replacing the impeller inside of the supercharger. So a lot of companies sell some replacement impellers for the supercharger, then that will increase from the 13 pounds or 12 pounds of boost that it makes the stock to something like 22, 27, even 32 pounds impellers. And some of them, they need to machine the case to increase, uh, to, in to install that, that impeller. In this particular case, we're discussing something very different, which is actually adding a turbo to make more power. Uh, and traditionally, when you add a turbo to a jet ski, most of the racers or the people that modify them, they, re they remove the supercharger. So the turbo comes right in as any other application that you really have a single power adder. The problem, or let's say the challenge with that is if you want to make something above, let's say 800 horsepower or 1000 horsepower on a jet ski, you need to have a turbo big enough to do that. But you're still only having a 1.8 liter engine, slightly bigger than that, that cannot produce much more than 180, 200 horsepower naturally spirated. So you have a turbo that needs to run 60 pounds, maybe, maybe even more boost. If you look to the efficiency graph of a turbo that big, you probably will need a turbo that is like a 79 or 82 millimeter turbo to make over a thousand horsepower. Sometimes actually a 73 uh, or a 72 millimeter turbo will likely do already over a thousand horsepower, but a 73, 72 millimeter turbo on a, on a 1.8 liter below 200 horsepower naturally aspirated, it is very hard to pull without surging. So you have a very, a fine line on the gr uh, efficiency graph where you actually will be running. So in this particular case, we have a Garrett G42 1200 here installed on the, on the bench on this engine, but we are actually going to use a G42 1450. With that turbo is technically specified for 1400 horsepower, 1450 horsepower, and it has a 79 millimeter turbo. That turbo is capable of doing uh, above 1000 horsepower kind of easy but if you don't have the the supercharger if you're only using that turbo with this engine I, I'm going to share with you guys on the screen here uh, efficiency graph of this turbo the 79 millimeter turbo on a tur on an engine 1.8 liter engine so you guys can see where the the efficiency line is and where is the surge line and it's very, very close to the surge line because we don't want to run on that low efficiency zone. 
but that's where you need to improve so much parts on the engine like camshaft, valves, cylinder head and feel or even a lot of guys need to run nitrous so all those engine modifications are able to actually make the engine uh, base horsepower increase from 180 to let's say 200 something horsepower so then you're, you're, you're going a little back to the best efficiency of this turbo to this engine. Once we understand that uh, the clear limitation is really to make a lot of power because if you're really looking for something along the 600 horsepower range which is on a jet ski is almost too much depending on the application uh, on a 60, 600 horsepower range you definitely can use a smaller turbo maybe a 62 millimeter turbo or a 64 68 something like that and that turbo will pair a lot better with these engines and i'm going to share here one of the efficiency graph for a 62 millimeter turbo on, on an engine like this so you can see that we can actually have a lot better efficiency zones and the turbo is, is far from uh, the surge area and also far from the choke area now going back to the thousand plus horsepower engines another way instead of actually adding nitros or adding other modifications to the engine is actually keeping the stock supercharger so this is where it's interesting to understand how the compound turbo works. So the compound supercharger, what we do is actually this turbo, instead of seeing this engine as a naturally aspirated engine with 180 horsepower, 160 horsepower engine, it will actually have the exhaust from an engine that has originally 250 horsepower. And if you consider the supercharger gets uh, boost by RPM as well. This supercharger at 10,000 RPM it will probably make about 16 pounds or so. Then we estimate this engine with the supercharger not considering the turbo has about 350 horsepower. Let's let's think like that. So with 350 horsepower it will be much easier to spool this big turbo instead of a 160 or 180 horsepower engine. So the biggest benefit of keeping the supercharger is you use pull the turbo with a more powerful engine uh, you make you're already making 350 horsepower the turbo spools by the horsepower that the base engine is doing so in this case 350 horsepower of exhaust flow the turbo doesn't even know if it's a four cylinder supercharger or if it's a v6 or a v8 cylinder engine that is actually spooling the turbo so the the spool for this turbo, instead of being, let's say, at 9,000, 10,000 RPM, it will likely be at 6,000 RPM or 5,000, depends on the application. So understanding that the, the, the spool will be much easier, that, uh, that is already a benefit of the compound. So the compound also benefits because you can spool by the smaller power adder and you can make the total power of the bigger power adder. In this case, it's a, super, a small supercharger and a big turbo. If you have a compound turbo on turbo, the small turbo will actually mandate how quick the engine will spool and the big turbo will mandate how much power you can make. Now, going back to another interesting benefit. If you don't have the supercharger and you're trying to make 60 pounds of boost on this turbo, on this engine, it's natural that you're, you're going to make a back pressure of uh, almost at least one to one. So in explaining, if I'm making 60 pounds of boost here, this turbo is revving at 150,000 RPM and this back pressure here will be under 60 pounds or 70 pounds, 80 pounds of, of back pressure range. So you have a very hard time for the air or the, the exhaust gases to leave the engine. And this makes you, you make you lose horsepower. So the lower the back pressure you have on an engine, the more horsepower you make. So in this particular case, uh, the, the turbos, they work, they work as a multiplier. So they, pre they are pressure multipliers. So this supercharger is multiplying the pressure or the ambient, let's remove this, the compound. This supercharger multiplies the ambient uh, pressure, the atmospheric pressure into the engine. And uh, let's say this is making 14 pounds of boost. 14 pounds of boost is actually two atmospheres and is a pressure ratio of two to one. So whatever pressure, this supercharger sees here, and let's say it's, it's zero pounds of boost, which is a one atmosphere, uh, it will multiply by two, and the intake manifold will see actually two atmospheres, uh, which is actually, let's say, one, uh, one bar of boost or 14 pounds of boost. 
So this is how uh, a compressor on a turbo or a supercharger multiplies the boost or the pressure. But if you actually increase from zero pounds of boost, let's say this way here, or atmospheric pressure, to 14 pounds of boost here on the intake of the supercharger, so this, this uh, compressor will multiply by two again. So here we have two atmospheres, which is one atmosphere from the ambient plus another atmosphere generated by the turbo. And these two atmospheres will be multiplied by two here, makes four uh, atmospheres here, which is uh, the same as three bars of boost or, three, or 43 pounds of boost. So in this example, if we're making only one, one bar of boost or 14 pounds of boost here, this supercharger will make this 43 pounds of boost or three bar of boost. But here's the interesting fact. With this turbo only making one bar or 14 pounds of boost, uh, it will pro likely having below that on back pressure. So it will likely have like low, only like 10 pounds of back pressure or 0.7 bar of back pressure because it's typically on that area is even easier to have a low back pressure. So the engine will be being feeded by 43 pounds of boost and with only 10 pounds of back pressure. That relation helps so much the engine to actually flow much better and makes more horsepower. So I would estimate that this engine, 43 pounds of boost and 10 pounds of back pressure will probably make more power than if we had 50 or even maybe 60 pounds of turbo and 60 pounds or 70 pounds of back pressure because it will actually breathe more. It will actually recirculate better the air from the intake to the cylinder chamber and to the exhaust. So then if we want to go a little higher boost, let's say we now actually add two bar or 30 pounds of boost on this intake pipe here. The turbo will be, uh, the, the supercharger will be actually getting 30 pounds of boost in the front that's actually three atmospheres. That's, that's uh, three atmospheres on the inlet of the supercharger. The supercharger will multiply this by two. So you get three atmospheres multiplied by two. We actually have six atmospheres here, which is the same as five bar of boost or 73 pounds of boost. So if we increase to, to 30 pounds of boost, the, the supercharger will multiply and make 73 pounds of boost with uh, effort on the turbo only making an effort of uh, 30 pounds. With this turbo of 30 pounds of boost, the exhaust will be likely on 30 pounds and the engine will be making 73 pounds of boost. So 73 pounds of boost with 30 pounds of back pressure, that will probably make a lot more power than any other combination with a single turbo can do. Because when you are actually pulling this at 73 pounds of boost, if you don't have the supercharger, the 73 pounds of boost on this, in, this turbo to generate on the intake will likely be at a, a, over 100 pounds of back pressure. So then you lost your efficiency line on this turbo. So I'm, I'm going to plot here the efficiency graph for this turbo on a compounds uh, graph. And you can see the line crossing right in the middle of the efficiency line. So we're using this turbo on the best efficiency zone possible with the lowest back pressure possible with the addition of the supercharger. And uh, a lot of people also ask, okay, but is my supercharger needs, if the supercharger is actually making 73 pounds of boost here, is my supercharger impeller needs to be 73 pounds? No, the supercharger is not designed by, to make certain amount of boost, it's designed to be a multiplier or a pressure multiplier. So in these cases, this stock supercharger impeller multiplies by two. If you actually replace the stock supercharger impeller to something that is actually bigger than that, you may, this, you may actually, all these calculations will be not uh, the same. And, uh, and instead of the engine having, let's say, 30, 30, 350 horsepower, it will be 450 or 500 horsepower. Then the turbo will have to be a lot bigger. And uh, it doesn't make sense unless you want to make two, 3,000 horsepower on an engine like that. So for a 1,000 range, 1,000 horsepower range, in my opinion, the perfect combination of supercharger is completely stock supercharger impeller. Sure, you need to upgrade the shafts and all that stuff, but uh, in terms of flow and the pressure multiplier, the stock supercharger works perfectly. So, and then we are all talking about how to control that. In this case, we have an electronic wastegate. So the electronic wastegate is controlled by the fuel tech directly. 
And uh, it's very interesting because we have a way of controlling it where it can stay electronically open for all the time. So in this case, this engine will be only making, let's say, 300 horsepower, 350 horsepower, uh, depending on the RPM. And as soon as we want more boost, we can even have a TPS table a based uh, boost for this turbo controlled by the electronic wastegate. So the electronic wastegate is a perfect fit to actually do a compound turbo on a supercharger because you really can, you can ramp this setup from 300 horsepower up to a, above 1000 horsepower with a very controllable way. It's different than having the turbo spooling and you lose control. This will be very, very controllable. So in this case, we also are adding on the fuel tech, we're adding EGTs so we can actually monitor the back temperature per cylinder. We are measuring the back pressure. So the back pressure on this exhaust manifold, we're measuring the, the wastegate actually have a position sensor that's very helpful. We're adding a turbo speed sensor that will tell the turbo RPM so we can actually verify all those graphs over there. And also sure the O2 sensor goes after the turbo. Uh, so we can actually read the O2s of this setup. And so as you guys seen, we're working at FuelTech really hard to, to develop solutions for the jet skis. Uh, we just released our new plug and play harnesses for the Yamahas. So it's a complete harness that actually fits into this engine and can remove the stock computer and actually control completely the engine from a Yamaha stock engine to a beast like this where you can actually have multiple sensors and uh, controls like electronic wastegate. So please check our plug and play harnesses for this Yamaha engine is very soon we're working on the c solution as well. But uh, it's cool because we also had the right reverse, the right control on the Yamaha stock dash on the newer 19 and newer uh, Yamahas. So the fuel tech fully integrates with these jet skis and can do a completely standalone control and replacing the stock computer for that. I hope you guys enjoy this video. This is a very deep technical video. We've been working really hard to develop these solutions and you, you guys know as, us as FuelTech, we always try to do our best. We always put our hands on to learn, to understand how it works, to make the best products for the market. So if you guys enjoy this video, please leave a comment, subscribe to our channel. We'll be sharing more steps of these projects very soon. Thank you.